Hi there, this is a second go at this because I made a complete hash up of the last video. Uh, it's just a bit of an update really uh, on the water table. You can see we've got the ouchie spikes in there, um, which is now being called Crocs and all kinds of things by my guys here. Um, works brilliantly. Uh, slight flaw in my plan was that I should have made the spikes a little bit lower. Um, I'd like the water level to be touching the top of the spikes uh, so we absorb as much uh, smeachy dust as possible. Um, so next time we clean it out, which won't be my job, uh, we'll, we'll lower those spikes. So that's one thing. But we've got rails that run up through. There's three rails that run all the way up through, supported on angle iron. Um, the reason it's supported on angle iron is that this water tray, you can see it's only two mil tray, uh, is 100 mil deep. And it's supported underneath only in five areas. So I've made sure that the bearing for that, because that's a whole sheet of six mil there you're looking at um, to make all of that uh, eight before sheet. Uh, so yeah, looking at those rails there, they do go down onto um, angle bearings that are that then the weight is transferred through to the cross braces that run across the plasma to support the water table. Uh, it would have been so easy to, to mess up that and have the uh, and have those uh, rails running up and down and being supported on just two mil plate in between the supports. So we made sure that we thought about that one for a change. <laughs> Don't always think about crap like that, but there we go. Uh, just to show you how I put them together, it's, here's a sample, yeah, a test sample. So as you see it on the machine, there's the rail. Yep, and here's the spike and you can see that it's just, there we go. So one slots into the other, look. Um, and that keeps it all nice and rigid. It stops that from doing that, and it stops it bending that way, and all the other stuff. Uh, but this, I just want to show you this. These cuts, oh, I can't really see, it's not focusing particularly well, but these cuts are with old consumables. There we go, old consumables, little or no cleanup. Oh, a little bit of flag there, but. Little or no clean up. There you go. Can't really ask for much better than that, can you? Yeah, or am I dreaming? Um, so, yeah, I mean, the, the back side is the side to see, I guess, if I just bring it down here. That cut, there you go. You can see I've just touched it with a light sander, but that's just, in my opinion, so nice. Nice cuts. Anyway, enough of me uh, praising myself. Uh, here was I have I was asked about what stepper drivers I use and what motors I use. I go to a, a, a company Steppers Online or CNC for you .co.uk. Um, CNC for you .co.uk are quite expensive, but they they try and test every component they sell, which is a bonus. Uh, the other one, Stepper Online, uh, they I'm not sure they they test much. To be fair, I think they're a Chinese company that have got. Um, branches in UK, Australia, Germany, and then there's the China head office, if you can call a website an office. Uh, and I'll just show the. There you go. This is the the, the kit that I used. Um, you won't be able to see it very well because, like I said, I'm rubbish with this screen stuff. Um, but you can buy the kits like that, and you can see you've got your aircraft connector and a DB9 connector. It's a CL42T driver. They're dead easy. You get some quite long cables. They're not massively long, um, but they do the job. And you can see all of that for that each. It says out of stock. It's out of stock in the UK, but it is in stock in Germany, by the way. So that's where I get it from. Those are the guys. Yeah, so uh, yeah, if you need to get them, Get them from them, they are pretty good. Uh, they do occasionally have um, things for sale. Um, not always what you'd expect it to be, quite often in the sales page. Uh, so none of that, oh well, look, there you go, look, there are some. There is a whole bunch, so US, 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 US. So there's a US branch as well. So not a lot in UK. All right, um, we've got the choice here. Looks so like we've got United Kingdom. 
And here you can see, here are the planetary gears. Um, this is available in the United Kingdom. Here are the planetary gears. Uh, NEMA 70 motor 10 to 1. That's more or less what I've got on my machine, um, except I've got these plate ones here. And again, look at the price. Come on, guys. I mean, that is, if they break, you buy a new one, right? I mean, it's not very um, green of me, but it is, it is what it is. Um, if they're gonna offer these things, they do have a kit there as well, look. A closed loop stepper kit. Uh, that is power supply. Yeah, closed loop motor, which is a three newton meter. It's not a very big one, but three newton meter motor driver cables for that. 61 quid for all of that. Hmm. Yeah, makes me want to build another machine. Anyway, what machine can I build? Uh, I do have a machine in the pipeline. It is going to be a CNC wire bender that is going to bend um, eight mil bar. Um, and I've used one of those, uh, I've used a giant, uh, the biggest motor I could actually buy, stepper motor that was available on um, CNC for you. It was quite an expensive motor. And then I bought a big gearbox as well, 50 to one ratio reduction. And this thing bends like crazy. Uh, what I might do, I might go and uh, fire it up in a minute and you can just see it bending um, a bit of 8 mil bar. Uh, oh no, I can't. My apologies. I won't be able to because I've taken the breakout board home, so it's not here. But yeah, that, that is an up and coming. That is an up and coming. So there we go. That's where we are. Uh, please like and subscribe. I do appreciate all your subscriptions. I appreciate all the likes and I certainly appreciate all the comments. Good, bad, or indifferent, it really doesn't matter. Um, I just like to know that uh, maybe I'm making a difference and maybe somebody's learning there. Uh, if you want to know anything about the construction of this table, please ask. Uh, I'm asked constantly if I can build somebody one. I don't build these tables. I've got no way of certificating them. I've got no way of, uh, you know, of commercializing it, uh, mainly because I'm just too busy doing my day job so uh, as much as I would love to be able to build these for a living, uh, the marketplace is saturated with cheaper, not so good stuff that a lot of people just tend to go for and make do. So, you know, something like this, this machine has cost me, I dread to think, but it's upwards of £20,000, uh, which is quite a lot of money. Um, and that's not because of what it, the way it is at the moment. That's the development process that I've had to go through to do it all. Um, don't forget the 105 plasma underneath is going to set you back at least six, seven thousand pounds of that before you start. Uh, and once you start adding up, although the stepper motors, um, you know, these closed loops are, are cheap enough. Uh, you, you know, I've got one, two, three, four, five, there's five motors on this thing with five drivers, two power supplies. The My Plasma kit itself is around about the 500 pound mark, I think. I might be wrong, but it's there, thereabouts. Um, and by the time you've built all the cases, you've built the table, there's easily 700 pounds in materials here. Um, by the time you take a sheet of six mil to build the water table, the three sheets of two mil to actually hold the water in, because, you know, obviously it needs holding in. Um, by the time you add your the SBR rails, the rack and pinion, it really, really adds up. So I reckon I'm looking at around about 20, 25,000. You can buy maxi cuts or whatever they're called you know true cut stuff whatever they call it um for like 12 grand uh, you know with a an ish and but an okay power supply so as much as i'd like to build them um there is a massive quality difference between what can what is commercially available and this and what i mean by that is that i've made this for quality i haven't made it for speed even though it cuts like holy hell um I've made it for quality so that what we pull off this table is accurate and the customer themselves go, wow, and that's all I want. Uh, slightly egotistical maybe, but uh, I want people to go, that is impressive for a plasma cut. Uh, and I don't know how much further I can push this machine for more accuracy. I'm not sure I can. Um, 
but I'm going to keep trying because that's me. Uh, the eagle-eyed of you will notice that I still haven't. Um, there you go, look, it's still there. We know what that is. Yep, that is the sensor for the um, anti-collision on the torch. My apologies, I really should do it. It needs doing, it is a bit of a health and safety issue. Should that torch break out with the arc still running, it's gonna give somebody, hopefully not me, a really, really bad day. Um, it's Plasma arcs are, are, are nasty. Um, I have burnt myself with a plasma once, using a hand plasma when I was young and dumb. Um, I'll never do it again and I've still got the scars. So uh, yeah, don't mess with these things. They are, they're not to be messed with. And when you've got 105 amps and air pressure and everything else going through it, it's going to be a, it's going to be a, a bad day for somebody. Now I had, uh, moving on slightly, uh, there's something I'm going to try. It's not a very cheap experiment, but it's going to be an experiment nonetheless. A uh, friend of mine, Caribou Engineering, uh, Rod Abraham, came down uh, this week and he had a look at the machine and he tried to pull it apart and he couldn't. Ha, tough Rod. Um, he loves the machine. He thinks it's, it's pretty wicked for, uh, you know, for a DIY machine. But he suggested, because I, I want to cut stainless on here, um, but I want, if you cut stainless with air, you get a real, a bit of a black cut. In fact, I can show you. Uh, you get a bit of a, a black cut that is just horrid. Uh, let's go where I can uh, do walk, do walk. Uh, Rusty, you'll know what I'm talking about. I don't anybody else will. Right. So, this is stainless sheet stainless yeah um, and the cut right, let's see if I can focus yeah you can just see there's the blackness of that cut it's brown um, to be fair Rod said that's as good as cut you're gonna get with air um, on stainless so you know there's the there's the cut that's the underside and you can see this black dross it's sugaring and it's awful stuff the problem with that is that you can't take well right over the top of that because that is oxidized chromium, I believe. Uh, I'm sure somebody will tell me right on that. But um, yeah, that's oxidized stainless steel. There you go, there's, there's the cut. Um, nothing really wrong with the cut and it does cut it quite well. But what we're gonna try is that I've ordered a uh, high pressure regulator. Uh, um, a high pressure regulator for nitrogen. So what I'm going to do is put nitrogen through the, through the plasma. So what we'll do is we'll unplug the air. Uh, we'll have a nitrogen bottle stood over there in the corner, chained up in the corner. And we're going to try and cut stainless with nitrogen. Now that is going to be an experiment well worth watching. I might even live stream that if I can get somebody to give me a hand to hold the camera. Uh, because I'm excited as all hell about it. I'm going to cut aluminium. I'm going to cut mild steel and I'm going to cut stainless steel with nitrogen and see how we get on. The nitrogen bottle should be here next week at some point um, and as soon as it turns up uh, I'm going to get the regulator and then we'll make sure that we're pumping. Uh, I think the 105 needs around about 100 psi so I'm going to need a regulator that goes up to 100 psi. Um, the 105 for those of you who want to know and probably the same for the XP45 as well. So the XP105 and the XP45, probably the same, the hypertherm plasmas. Um, minimum 80 PSI. Do not even attempt anything below 80 PSI. And maximum, I believe, is around about 100, 130, 130 PSI. So as long as you work within that range, I think you'll get really good performance out of the machine. Uh, at the moment, mine's sat at 110 PSI um, out of uh, Beastie. Uh, and uh, that is what's given me some beautiful straight cuts, straight edge cuts as well. So, uh, yeah, it'd be interesting. Get the nitrogen on and just see what happens. After all, is that not what they use in laser? So, yeah, that'd be quite interesting. Another suggestion I had about the machine was plate marking. Now, the trouble is with the 105 plasma is it only goes down to, as he trips over the gas ball, um, the, it only goes down to 30 amps. For plate marking, ideally you want 5 to 10 amps. 
Uh, however, I have successfully plate marked with fine cut nozzles at 30 amps um, running along at a bit of a lick. The only problem with that is that you've got to keep changing your nozzles to plate mark and that is just an absolute arse ache. Um, and plate marking is essential when you're doing a lot of different plates for a biggish project. So if you're doing a steel structure or something like that and the uh, structural engineer calls up certain size plates and certain thickness and certain you know dimensions, whatever, um, it is dead handy to plate mark those components. Um, but what I was thinking was if I can find some kind of off-the-shelf hobby laser type thing um, definitely won't be CO2 laser because I'm not going to bolt a bloody great 1500 mil long CO2 tube to this it would end up being nasty although <laughs> maybe it might be a plan for later oh no I've got me thinking now yeah mm. anyway moving swiftly on got CO2 laser on this I could, you could probably bolt a decent 200 watt CO2 laser to the back of this thing Hmm. Um, so what I was looking at, I was looking at um, a small diode lasers. If there's if there's a diode laser that would even just even leave a bit of a mark on steel, that'd be cool. I don't think there is. I, don't, I think the wavelength's all wrong for that, but I don't really know enough about it. But I was thinking about these um, desktop um, fiber lasers. Now that, in my mind, would be quite a good plan. Buy one of those. All right, it's a thousand bucks, maybe give or take. Um, depends on AliExpress. Depends on what turns up. Um, but you could get one of those and just use the head, bolt it to the uh, to the left or the right of your torch, and use the scriber offset function in my plasm to do your laser marking. It was just a thought um, that, that went through my head. And I'm thinking that would be really, really cool. However, the trouble is with really, really cool things, they can be expensive mistakes. So uh, I'll look into that. What I may do is um, is bolt a, a, a real cheap uh, diode laser on there and just see if we can get the offset working nicely. So maybe we'll uh, put a bit of, you know, a bit of card or something over the top of the... Uh, you know, over the top of the steel or whatever, and just see if the laser mark will, you know, if we do a bit, difficult to explain what I'm trying to say, really. Uh, this is a trouble when you have too much wine. Um, last night, not today. Uh, so we could pierce a hole with the plasma, and then we could have um, a laser mark. We could try marking uh, some tape or something that we put around that particular pierced hole to see if the offset works as well as it, it should do. I'm sure it does, but it's still worth worth looking at. So that is up and coming. We will bolt it to the side. We've got some pre-existing holes in the machine and it would be fun to do, probably. Uh, and it would, uh, and if we could get a fiber laser to plate mark, uh, I think that'd be pretty excellent stuff. <laughs> it really would be quite excellent. Um, but again, you know, we're in a world of uh, doing something, oh, cameras on the face. Um, we're in the world of doing something that is not really done in the business. Um, I don't know anybody that would bolt a small fiber laser marking device to the side of a plasma machine. It seems madness, but hey, that's what it's all about, right? If you don't try it, you don't know. So there we go. Okay, that's it for today. Uh, please like and subscribe. Like I already said, I really do appreciate uh, everybody's uh, subscriptions likes and comments and i will answer all your questions as fast as humanly possible so take care now cheers <laughs>